afternoon. You're in tune to Ron March, Ron March Show. Today is date, October the 14th, 2015. We got a hot show for you tonight. And let me start out by saying I apologize. We had a change in our uh, topic. We're going to do that at a later date, third party debt collector. We're going to do that at a different, at a later time. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to deal with uh, a continuation of last night. United, all caps, United States of America versus upper and lower caps, United States. So, Beverly D, are you there? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, ma'am. I hear you loud and clear. How about me? Okay. I'm coming in pretty Now, you, you sound like you are on a loudspeaker. Loudspeaker. I mean, you sound like you on your speakerphone. That's what I mean. No, I'm on the I'm on a microphone and headset. Ah. Uh, okay. Now that R means what? Not clear. <laughs> you always sound better on the telephone, but we I can like hear to... you as long as we don't have no uh, static. We hear you. Okay. All right. I I saw your text, and I did not get a chance to hear your show. Is that what you're telling, what telling me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you like to give me an update, or, or you want me to uh, look at it later? Well, I didn't get a chance. Well, okay, well, it was just uh, that uh, uh, from my understanding is that, that there, the UN is uh, – it's like a takeover that's going on with, with the uh, United the Corporation, United States, and the Corporation, Religious Corporation. And so this is what they call that one world order where you got this one group of people that control the whole world, and it just seems like that uh, this is what, what we are involved in now. It kind of has something to do with that uh September 2013 uh, situation, Agenda 21, and I, that's why I, it's, I have to send you some articles, and I'm just getting okay. the gist of what is going on. Okay. I didn't get a chance to uh, hear it, nor do I know what's going on with the uh, United Nations at this time, but so much is going on. Yes. Now, that email sent you last night about the takeover of the uh, uh, Federal Reserve. Did you get a chance to see any of that? Yes. That's one, that yes. was the first email I sent you last night. Uh, and, that this was kind of tie, and, and this is kind of tie into that, too, the, the takeover of the Federal Reserve. Well, we probably can't see the forest for the trees. But we are definitely in the forest. There is a change coming, and we can only prepare ourselves by educating our mindset and raising our consciousness. That's the only protection that we have. Yeah. Maybe to, when we finish with tonight, maybe we can uh, have a better look at what we are talking about. Right. Okay. Now, I want to make an announcement uh, real quick. Uh, I did apologize for the change of our title for tonight, you are aware that we changed it. Number two, I'm going to uh, go down to a four-day work week. I will be open only Monday through Thursday. When I say open, my cell phone, 313-656-7283, will be turned off 6 o'clock on Thursday. 10 o'clock a.m. Monday morning, I will turn it back on. Now, the reason for that, my workload is too heavy. I'm tired of apologizing to, to, to the listeners that I haven't sent them or, or studied and researched what they've asked me to do, and I'm just uh, making excuses and pushing it back, pushing it back. It's ridiculous. I'm like a, a dog chasing my tail. I'm, I'm getting nothing done. And uh, with my health, and with my production, it's getting really bad. So I'm, I'm announcing now, and I'll do it every time I'm on the air, 
that I only I'll only be open, which is the Ron Mark show, will only be open Monday through Thursday. I'm doing a four day work week, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I'm going to take that time to catch up on everything I possibly can. So everyone out there that I owe uh, return emails, uh, DVD, uh, you name it, you, you all know about it. Um, give me a give me a chance to get tight and get together, and I I, I will get it out to you. That's fair enough. Now, let's start out by me doing a brief setup on on what I ask you to look at there, and that is uh, this past weekend we I, I I recognized some very heavy stuff that was going on in the uh, area of the White House inside and the White House outside. And what I'm talking about, Farrakhan was on the outside on Saturday screaming and running his package. He was screaming. He was running his package. And then on the inside, we have a bunch of tunes who are trying desperately to, what can I say? They're trying to uh, appoint, nominate, or elect a Speaker of the House. They can't find one. This has to be the first in the history of the United States where no one wants that position. Now, when you listen to them carefully, you'll understand the reason they don't want it, because there are two evil fractions, quote, unquote, evil, so-called evil fractions in the Republican Party. One of them is known as the Freedom Now Party, which is relatively new, and the other is called the Tea, Tea Party. And they can't get along with each other. Both of them hate the Republican Party, and all three of them hate Obama. Now, the loser in all of this, when you throw the Democratic Party in there, is black America. We are being uh, duped, bamboozled, hoodwinked, you, you name it, we are getting plastered. And hopefully after today, you'll be clear on the, the situation in America and in the United States, excuse me, and you'll be able to find a niche in which way you decide to go in the future. And that's why I decided to change the program because last yesterday was a monster a bit. I'm telling you, I, it was it it it, it hurt me because I was learning as I was reading, and I just went bonkers myself. So hopefully we can lay that on you and get you going. Now, what we're going to do, Bev, is deal with the public order, the time of the great fraud and declaration of law. So do you have any questions before we start? Okay, you said that this is what, because um, your reception is really not good. Uh, you said that this cover letter, public law, now, who is Anna Von Ritz? Who is that? She is a circuit court judge in Alaska. In Alaska? Yes. Okay. And she is completely affiliated with, let me let me start naming them all. Number one, she's affiliated with uh, uh, Jade Helm, 15. Wait a minute. I couldn't get Jane. that. Wait a minute. Wait, Raj, we can't hear you. Say that again. All right, let me uh, switch over to the telephone, see if I can't deal with that. Let me get clear. See what you think about this. One second. You are listening to the Ron March Show and the Truth to Power Show with Ron March and Beverly D. And uh, Ron March is um, making some adjustments, and uh, we're just waiting so we can hear him clear because we want to be able to hear and understand this important information that he is uh, bringing to us this evening. 
And so as Ron makes the adjustment, uh, let me see, I might have to uh, call back in. So just bear with us. Oh, hang we, on. How do you time. hear me now, Bill? Okay. okay. Bill, can you hear me now? Yes, much clearer. All right. All right, let me see something here. One more one more little job, Aru. Yep. Okay. I'll get, I'll get feedback. All right. Uh, do you have any questions? What I said was when you missed me, um, uh, we're going to deal with the public order, the timeline of the great fraud, and the declaration of law. Do you see okay. that? That's on the second page. Okay. Now, that's, uh, uh, that first paragraph is interesting. Uh, I have confirms. Oh, yeah, you were asking me who was this uh, Anna Von Ritz. Yes. Okay. She was the one that put out all of the, uh, I want to call them, Lawful. She put out the lawful notices to the Roman courier when the okay. Pope came to town. She started sending them out around 4th of July. She sent one to the uh, President of the United States. He went up there and met with her. They didn't, they didn't expose it, but if you think back, approximately a month ago, Obama went to the um, uh, what's your majigger up in Alaska, mm -hmm. and he didn't talk about much. Caribou about all I remember. He even talked about, but I'm sure he met with her because she she and then an attorney for the courier for the Roman uh, uh, courier. What I call it, um, uh, courier. There you go. Uh, and the uh, legal attorney for the courier came also and met with Obama prior to the Pope coming. Mm -hmm. And all that information I was giving out during that time came from her and another another gentleman who was a general chief of staff of the army that the Pope had set up in the United States. Well, I say the Roman courier set up in the United States. Does that answer your question on that? Yes, 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 it does. Okay. Now, she, she has a lot of information because... I believe that they, Alaska, pulled out of the so-called uh, continental United States, along with Hawaii. We're back to 48 states. But well, once we finish today, you'll understand why it's such a strong gobbledygook that they mm -hmm. are making it so difficult for us to understand what's going on. All right? Yes. Now, not before I get started, too. Now, I'm looking in here, and it's saying the continental United States. Now, is that a difference between the United States and the United States of America? Now I'm hearing the continental United States. Continental United States means the 48 states that are connected. There's a word okay. they use. Uh, con okay. con con starts with a C. I can't remember what it is. But it's the continental United States, which was the original setup. The Union was the original setup. Alaska came in late. Hawaii came in late. Okay. okay. Conti contiguous. Contiguous United States, I believe, is the same as continental United States. You might have saw mm -hmm. that word before. Con contigu contiguous. Something like that. Okay. That means that all the states are connected. Okay. okay, but this is still we still dealing with the corporation, uh, United States of America Inc. Today we are, but we didn't start out with that. Right. Okay. So don't get ahead of yourself until you get to layout okay. of, of what went down, and that's what we're going to do today. Okay. And we're going to start in 1754 to 1776. Now that's prior to so-called corporation, United States, everything you've asked me about that, this is all being done prior to, okay? Okay. So go ahead and you can start. Okay, so we're going to start with 1754 to 1776. The United Colonies take shape as a loose political association, and the first and second 
Continental Congress results. So we had two, first and second Continental Congress results. Did you have two, you you asking me? Yeah, I mean, is this dealing with the United States of America and the United States, the the, uh, 13 colonies? Is that what you're talking about? The Continental Congress, Derek, is only the meeting of the government. And they say it was a loose political association. So we can really say there was a group of people that came out of the uh, 13 colonies that met trying to set up a government. And they met twice. The first one, in hindsight, let's get that straight. The first uh, through uh, uh, what what I what I always bring up. uh, Can't think of the word I use, but all of that's in hindsight. The first meeting and the second meeting, they called it Continental Congress. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. And then and then in 1776. The colonies declared independence. So after they had those that secret meeting and the other meeting, then they came together and declared uh, independence in 1776. Correct. And Correct. 1781, the Article of Confederation binds states. Political subdivision of the United in the international jurisdiction of the sea. Why a confederation instead of a federation? Because the original states gave up some of their natural tradition to the new political entity, the union they created. Okay. Hmm. Now, let me explain. Confederation is what we're going to have to do because we don't want to set up a federation, but I'll do a confederation first, because we all have different ways to go. We don't want to join and come up with a Boy Scout club or a United States club. We don't need to do all that. That would come mm-hmm. under federation. We would sign the hookup. We want to come up with a confederation because we all want to have a problem with America, and then we will decide on how to deal with the problem. We don't have to join each other. We're going to be comrades or confederates, if you will, because we all have different problems because we all live on different uh, incomes. We all have different colors, and that's another problem in America. And we definitely all uh, have different uh, uh, consciousness. So some of us may want to stay Christians and go to church, as an example. Others may want to get out of the entire United States and do what we want to do. So we we don't want them to come after us and say, well, Uh, You're a Christian. Why are they out there doing this? All that old crap that they normally do to divide and conquer. So we're only going to be mad at United States, and we can join together and fight United States. Do you understand that? Right. As a confederation. As a confederation, yes. Okay. Okay. Number four. 1783, the Treaty of Paris and the Treaty of Facilla, Facilla, Versella, cemented agreement, splitting the yep. land and sea jurisdiction between the states and the federal union, and placed King George III as trustee of American interest on the high seas and navigable inland waterways which means he kept control of American international commerce. The new union entity operated in the international jurisdiction of the sea was also controlled by the British, and it was always, and it has always been the British monarchy responsibility as international trustees to manage it and guarantee its proper operation. It was instead ran a mark for 150 years. All right. Because we're dealing with uh, water, we're dealing with the sea, high seas, and we're dealing with inland waters. So the lakes would be inland water. The Mississippi River would be inland water. The uh, Ohio River, I can't name them all, but all the rivers would be inland. So when they set this thing up, 
uh, through this uh, treaty of Paris and the Treaty of Ver Versailles, they cemented the agreement that uh, the British, and remember there's a difference between the British and the English. England was over there and Britain was in New York. And the king of Britain was in New York who was King George III. So they're talking about the British monarchy, monarch, and they're talking about the uh, uh, England is going to come in uh, in a minute. And they're talking about the jurisdictions. Now, the jurisdictions, since they declared it, I had a question today, what is a jurisdiction? You can declare Detroit your jurisdiction if you have a means to control Detroit. Now, the way the government's set up today, you can only have jurisdiction over your, your home or your property that you purchased. That's why they gave you uh, a, a degrees of, of land, and they gave you a land description. You can tell the, the kids next door, stay out of my yard. And you definitely can tell people that come in your house to take their shoes off and take their hat off when they come in your house. And you can defend that because you're in your jurisdiction. So this cat is going to declare, or they did, without telling us as Americans, that they're going to split the high seas and the navigational inland waterways. They're going to give up the sea, and they're going to keep the inland waterways. You got it? So the British, which was in New York, controlled the seas. Yes. No, no. And they controlled the, no, inland the inland waterways. Yeah. They controlled, and, and who controlled the sea? Was that England? It's going to be England, probably France, everybody out there. But we'll get to that as we go forward. Okay. But as far okay. as the United States was concerned, they wanted to steal America. Remember that. Okay. They came here to steal our land. So all of this was set up and done without our approval. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, how did this British, now this British, are these... Uh, Caucasian, or were these indigenous people that was in New York? How did they get to own well, the inland? My info. Well, there you go again. They don't own it. They are declaring. I mean, well, how did they be declare? Okay. Okay. They just said it. I say to you, I declare your house belong to me. Now I can come over there with my pistols and throw you out. Okay. Now, the best you can do is call the government and tell them that you have done this, I mean, I have done this and this to you, and then the government show up, if I show them a, a, a quick claim deed or some type of contract that I tricked you to sign, you're going to stay on the outside. You follow me? Yep. They're stealing these houses, these, this, uh, what they call it, land bank operation. They're buying multitudes of houses. And they're putting three to five to ten houses on one quick claim deed. That's it. That's illegal. So they're getting away with it. And since you don't know, they took your house. So they showed you a quick claim deed. They took you to court. You didn't bring it up. The court said they got a deed on the house, so get out. That happened to a brother that we all that we know named Juan. I tried to explain it to him, but he had other ideas, but they came and evicted him. So I'm checking you every time you make a comment that is not in in cahoots or coherent with where we're going with this. I can divide United States and America. I can divide the high seas and the inland waters, and I'm going to work with you so you can do the same thing. All right. Okay. All, right. Okay. All right. All right. Now, number, number five, 1787. The Supreme Perfect Republican Declaration of the United Colonies creates the National Trust owned the continental United States. Hmm. Yes. Now, okay. I looked up that Supreme Perfect Republic Declaration, and all it is is language of the ancient England and part Latin, that the words in that declaration sound like what you were you you were taught 
but it didn't mean what they what you think it meant. It's almost mm. like with legalese doc, uh, uh, declaration. Okay. And since you don't have any knowledge of legalese, it's going to be very difficult for you to even challenge me. You dig? Because right. you, you understand? Because I have the knowledge of legalese and you don't. And so they set it up that way so that they can trick the people. Now, it was a white-on-white -white package at this point. They had to start dealing with black folks as slaves and as servants and, and subjects yet. They're only dealing with those indentured servants who came over on different promises to get over here. You got it? Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. All right, number six. Seventeen, and this is in 1789. Two years later, the Constitution of the United States of America split off the sea jurisdiction and creates the new federal United States. A year later, in 1790, the federal United States formed a commercial company doing business as the United States Commercially Company to provide the 19 in you services services agreed to by the subscribing states. Yes. So now, now uh, all right, let me tell you what that means. Commercial company is a company that is organized to make a profit. American law prevents prevent forbids commercial companies from owning banks. The definition of commercial companies come from the Cambridge British English Dictionary. I looked that up. So they set up what was illegal in 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 the uh, United States because they set up banks and they set up commercial companies. And since they used the, uh, the term, let me go back up here, uh, Give me a second. I got it all right here. Supreme Perfected Republican Declaration. Everybody agreed to it because the language is so confusing. They thought they was doing one thing, and they actually agreed to do something else. Do you mm. get it? Yes. So this is yes. a bunch of goo a bunch of googly got. Yes. A bunch of crooks. <laughs> <laughs> A bunch of crooks. Okay. Uh, Unbelievable. All right, go ahead. <laughs> okay, now, now they saying that they created this new federal United States. So this is just another corporation on top of the other corporation. What number are you on? Number six? I'm still on number six. Still on number okay. six. Okay. Two, All right. when they they yes. When they created the new federal United States, they began to put the colonies together. I don't know how many states they had, but they put it together and put it under the United States Constitution. It says here, two years later, the Constitution for the United States. See, notice that word, for. This is very, very, very important. This deals with that language that I just mentioned, that supreme perfected language. Right. They're going to take that far out and put of in there. Mm. Now, when they say the Constitution for the United States, that means that we, who gave them the, the contract or the Constitution, we own the United States because the Constitution said for the United States. If I do something for you, I am in control, Bill. Right. But if I do something of you, I would think you told me to do it which makes you the kingpin. Hmm. <laughs> that makes sense? Yeah. yeah I want you to remember that we may have to come back to that Constitution 4, F-O-R. They're going to take that out and trick everybody and make you think I'm highlighting it and I'm turning to red. And, and, and then they're going to make you think that you're, doing, that you're in one Constitution and really you're in another one that they made up. Okay, but they in that Constitution for 
Nobody told them they could do that. In the Constitution for the United States of America, they took it all upon themselves to split it off the sea jurisdiction and create a new federal United States, which would be on the inlands, which means they're going to throw the Mississippi and all of those lake rivers. So by doing that, that you can stop all the cargo from moving, and then you can control everybody else. You can make them do what you want them to do. Hmm. Hmm. I like that one. That means you got it and you made it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, every, every week is just a <laughs> lot. Oh, my God. Okay, and, number seven. Wait a minute until you go. And then okay. they even had nerve to a year later the federal United States, which was the inland waterways. They formed okay. a commercial company doing business as notice what they said, as United States. And then they got a parenthesis commercial company. So now they're wow. tricking the people because they're changing it and they're setting up United States, but they really have a company for profit, and it and they never got permission to do that. See, they were cheating before they even started to provide the 19th innumerable services agreed to by the subscribing states. So we don't know who those states are, but the states can only be what they call states, but you and I can agree that they're talking about a little bit of the 13 colonies. Mm-hmm. All right, go wow. on the show. I okay. love it, baby. I love it. Oh, my God. Right, go ahead. Okay. Now, this is between 1812 and 1814. The British tried to horn in again and are beaten back. This skirmish resulted in the Treaty of, now, I don't know, what is that? Grant. Yeah. Grant. What yeah, is it? It's called Grant. Yep. Grant, okay, where the British interests in American shipping and commerce are reaffirmed and lasting peace is promised in return. Yes. So now, along with the water, now they're going to have problems fighting the people on land, which would be the everybody, the, the, the blacks, the, the Indians, or whoever was here, including their 13 colonies, now the British wants a piece of the profit of since he controls the ships coming down through the waterways. Now he's telling them on the land, you can't unload it unless you pay tariff. You can't unload it unless we get a piece of it. We're going to raise the shipping costs. All those negatives you can think of, so it would break, a war would break out. So what they said, let's set up a treaty. See, any time the European cannot win, they always want to have a treaty. Now, the treaty is the worst thing that can happen because since the treaty is in English, you can circumvent the treaty, and, and if you know what you're doing and get what change the language, just like I told you about that supreme perfected, and get everything you want. So what they did, they set up the Treaty of Ghent. I didn't look that up. Are you there? I'm here. I hear you. Uh, I didn't look it up. But the Treaty of Ghent, where the British interest in America, that's the first time they use that word, America. Now, you got to have your brain clicking as you read this. Because first, we're only talking about the colonies known as United States, United Colonies, and all of that. And they're only on the East Coast. And they're getting their ass kicked two ways. One by the, 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 the uh, Iroquois Confederation, who don't want them here in the first place. And then they get their butt kicked from the indentured servants who thought they was coming to freedom, coming out of, of uh, England, coming over here. They were promised freedom and got over here and found they was in worse shape over here than it was over there. So you got white on white on one side, and then you got uh, 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 white on brown and black on the other side. So they had to come up with treaties because they couldn't win them. Now you say this this treaty was made with America. It wasn't made with the United States of America, correct? Correct, because you didn't need United States, because the British they was only talking about the waterways, 
and the British had already stole the waterways in number six because they split it then and gave up the seas, which would be the ocean, and make, I don't know if the lakes were a part of it, but they gave that up and said, we'll only control the waterways, the inland waterways. So you ain't got to worry about the United States or nothing else. The United States was probably the one that was mad at them and probably was involved in the, the Gantt Treaty so that they could, uh, you know, build their own nation. They was here to build a nation. But the British was controlling everything that came to them. So now you can go back to your school books and understand why they had the tea, that fight with the Tea Party when they were talking about raising the tariffs. Remember that? Yeah. Okay. So then we're talking about that right here because they, the, the British had control. And Chris was at it, so they say, was the first one killed who was a black man. So you know blacks were involved. But he was not a slave because he had a gun and he was fighting the British. But the, but the indentured servants were all white that came out of England. You get it? Yes. All right. This is a whole different picture than uh, what we were talk, taught yes. in English. I mean, in yes. our history. Oh, oh my yes. God. They had to do that in order to get where they are today. They had to lie because they're all crooks. Where do you get deeper in this thing? All right. Number seven. I think we, is that where we are? Uh, we're on number eight. All right. Now this this is the year 1845, and the British monarchy and the Pope secretly agreed to undermine the American system of government via the Treaty of Verona. The British yes. monarchy breached the Treaty of Gump, and both yes. the Pope and the King secretly breached breach their trust as international trustees. They set out on a covert action and issue letter of of uh re- letters of marquee repra- and reprisal and reprise okay to the member of the bar association allowing them to act as foreign age agent on american soil and as privateer free of plundering american commerce yes now let's look up i got it letters of marquee and reprisal. In the days of fighting sail, which mean water, going back to the waterways, fighting mm-hmm. sail, a letter of marquee and reprisal was a government license authorizing a person, parentheses, known as a privateer, to attack and capture enemy vessels and bring them before admiralty courts for condemnation and sale. So the, the, the letters of a marquee was given to the, you'll read it a little later, it was given to the Bar Association. Not only did they attack the ships with raising tariffs to the courts, courts was already set up to be crooked, so they did it through the courts. Uh, then if they couldn't pay, they would capture the ships. You dig it? So now you're creating a big old thing because now you got, for example, you may have a French ship coming across the ocean, whatever the case is, and coming to America to sell something. He got to pay tariffs to the to the profit of the king of England, and then once he gets to his destination, the, the letter of marquee of these places will attack him again and make him pay more. So by the time he gets rid of his goods, he ain't made no profit. And this is what brought on that Boston Tea Party. You know what? Uh, this kind of this kind of reminds me of you know how they show on the gangster movies back in the day. I would send his men to every uh, commercial in the neighborhood, and they had to pay him. They couldn't make nothing because they were paying him. Uh, the protection money, yes. 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 Yes, I know what you're talking about. And don't forget now, the Pope is in on it. Yeah. You you see? Not only did they blow out the uh, Treaty of Ghent, they secretly undermined the American people. And if you read down, you you didn't get it. Listen, did you get it? 
Read it again. Start anywhere around the letters of Marquis. Go ahead. They gave who did they give okay. the letter of Marquis to? I'm looking right at they, it. They set out a curve a covert action and issued letter of Marquis and repraisal to the member of the Bar Association. Is those those people that we're dealing with today in court? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> oh my God. I wonder so many baby. people going to jail. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You got it. You got it, baby. Keep reading. Allowing them. Listen, go ahead. Allowing them to act as foreign agents on American soil and privateer free as to privateer. plunder free to plunder American commerce. And that's what they do. Wow. When you go to court, you're going to pay. You may not go to jail. If you ain't got money, you're going to jail. That's right. And if you pay, most of the time you still go to jail. Yes. Yes. Unless you and it's all done under the Treaty of Verona. Now, you dig it? Yes. And the under. <laughs> Wow. Let's get even. Oh, Ron, how much you, you, how you keep doing this to us every week? This is just ridiculous. We got to learn, man. <laughs> we got to learn. How else can we learn? <sighs> okay, number nine. Yes. 1860. This is the year 1860. Thanks yeah. to the effort of the Bar Association, a member of the Bar, Abraham Lincoln, is elected to serve as president. Note that he is ineligible to serve as president of the United States of America. Now, you know what? This is the first time I've seen United with a, a, a small U, oh. and yes. the rest of it. State of America, our capital. Now that's something else. Oh, they they Let really play right with now. them. Let me tell you what that means. It means that you're talking about the the original Constitution of the United States. But if it was all caps, or the first letter was all, uh, in uh, all caps, the first letter, you're talking about the the ink, the corporation. Uh, okay. All right. Now, okay. go ahead. Keep going. All right. Um, let me see where that. Note that it, start up. Uh, start here. Note that he is ineligible to serve as president of the United States of America. Go from there. Okay. Note that he is ineligible to serve as president of the United States of America by the t- titles of nobility amendment yes. to the actual constitution, but yes. he is eligible to serve as president of the United States, the commercial company. Yes. Uh, this is yes. the same situation we have with Barack Obama, who yes, is yes. ineligible to serve as president of the United States of America, but is able to serve as president of the United States Incorporated. So these guys, these birthers, wow, do they know this? Yes. They just they keep talking about where's the birth certificate, where's the birth certificate. But he but he's eligible to be the president of the incorporated. But you think he's gonna Beverly, Beverly, Beverly. Beverly, slow down for a minute. Do you think you're going to tell them this that you're learning tonight? Do you think anybody wants the American people to know what we're talking about tonight? The best he can do is what he did, just keep his mouth shut and laugh at them because they can't do nothing. What difference does it make? That's that's just like the other night when you you and uh, uh, Sayer L was on and uh, Captain Punch called in. And y'all sitting up there arguing with that punk about uh, president and his birth certificate and all that matter. Yeah. I started with that, yeah. but I said, I'm not getting in that matter. What difference does it make? It don't make any difference. He's president of the United States, the commercial company. You see it right there. Yeah. He can be from Russia. He can be from Budapest. 
because he's coming under a fictitious, unauthorized, lying constitution that nobody ratified, nobody agreed to. And they tricked us to get it going, and then they put us in their schools to teach us the madness. And we think we know everything because they give us a degree as we learn this madness. You got people like Obama who has a, a, I wouldn't say a PhD, but I know he's got a degree in Constitution law. You think you don't know yeah. this? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we ain't got to yeah. worry about that. They're all crooks. You, you got to understand that. They're all crooks. And why would they want to tell you when they're living good? They don't worry about uh, uh, lights and gas and food and stuff like we do every day. They don't have to worry about that. Let's keep going. <laughs> okay. Come number, on. Number 10. Now, this is the year 1861. The Civil right. War ends. Congress adjourned for lack of quorum, and without a date to reconvene, Lincoln organized a Delaware corporation, and the remaining members of Congress began functioning as the board of directors. Yes. But you know the, the states pulled out, so they didn't have a full quorum. Yeah. So what he did, he organized those that stayed and made them uh, members of this new corporation known as the Delaware Corporation and made them board of directors of it, and they kept functioning as if there was a real government. And nobody said a word. Okay, let's okay. keep moving. Yep. Number 11. Yep. This was a year later, in 1862, the Corporate Congress, a body of men, no different than the Board of Directors of IBM, changed the meaning of a single word, only and explic- explicitly <laughs> yep. for, for use within their corporation. The yep. word is person. From then on, the word person is deemed to mean corporation for federal government purposes. The 37th Congress, Second Session, Chapter 49, Section 68. Yes. I I couldn't find that. I searched. That's what my whole afternoon, I was looking for that. I could not find it. I don't know where I have to go to get it. But they change now. one word. On it. And see, you need to emphasize, they only explicitly for use within their corporation. And their corporation was the Delaware Corporation. And they use that word person only among themselves. You dig it? Right. All right. Let's keep so what about, what about this uh Supreme ruling that when they talked about the they ch- the word person for the Constitution uh, mean I mean for the corporation means that remember the one they just changed recently yeah they just did and what they, you look what you just read they only they only told you what you just read they told you all corporations were persons and I told you I was glad they did it. But most people said, how do they do that? They can't do the yaggy, yaggy, yaggy. So if they person, then when I go to court against General Motors or IBM, I expect IBM to show up. They can't send a representative, which is a lawyer. They just gave that, gave you a free ticket to go right there. Pick up $200 when you pass jail. If you knew this, you say good. But if you didn't know this, you'd be mad. So that could have been a test just to see how many people out there were aware. And it was a whole lot of people was upset. And I said, them the biggest dummies I ever seen in my life. I just had someone that just sent me that uh, a couple of weeks. They sent it to me. So they haven't read number 11. Okay, number 12, 1863. Lincoln yep. signed the Libra Code as commander in chief and put the Union, the Grand Army of the Republic, in charge of the nation's future and uh, money supply. 
Yes. Yes. Now, that tells you right there that he didn't have a government. Everything he was dealing with was people he was appointed. Those states that didn't come back yet, he took his generals, colonels, and majors, and light colonels, and told them, you are governor of this state, that state, and give me your vote so the paperwork could look good that I had the, I had the, the victory over all the states voted me in and gave me the right to do this. And he did it under, under coercion and, 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 and threats because he had to use the Grand Army of the Republic. He couldn't use the Union troops because they were illegal at the time to fight because there was no government. So they changed the name to the Grand Army of the Republic. And that's the same thing yep. the Pope was talking about and, and, and with that letter. And that's the same thing she talks about, the, 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 the judge of, of, a, of a, up there, because they want to go back to George Washington. They do not want to go back to let's say 1500, because we ran everything in 1500. But right. George Washington, once he got that contract, he started out and did the dirt. And that's where we are today, and, and this is how they did it, what we're talking about. So now I see why they killed Abraham Lincoln. Okay. So so if you tell me, why did they kill him? Because he was around here forming his own corporation, and this is not what the other group uh, wanted. He over here making his own rules and regulations and corporations. The answer to you is yes. But what about him being an illegal president? They said yeah, we don't I mean, have every- to listen. Hmm? We said, they said we don't have to listen to him. Well, we, don't even have to, we don't have to listen to the people who killed him either because they was they was forming their own illegal corporation. Yes, they were. Yes, they were. They were like the Tea Party and the Freedom Now Party. Yes, ma'am, you got it. That's why I tell you we are in the brink of another civil war today. And if the wrong person get elected for president after we get through with Obama, you may see some more hits on the president. History repeats itself if nobody knows about it. And you so mad now, you don't know what to do. Eh, 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 eh. I love it. Ah, oh, Lord. Okay, now number thirteen. This All right. is in the year this is the year eighteen sixty five when Lee's army surrendered to Grant and a general armistical is yep. declared. Yep. The southern states are in ruins and under military occupation by the Union. The original northern states are bankrupt. Foreign yeah. banks are in control of the new United States of America, Inc. And yeah. the Union Army resigned supreme. We, 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 they reigned. Um, they reigned. They reigned, reigned supreme. Supreme, yes. Yes. Yeah. Over the next two years, President Andrew Johnson will three times publicly declare peace on the land, judicial of the continental United States. The land, yep, go ahead, jurisdiction, the land jurisdiction. Okay, okay. Yep. But peace is never declared in the international jurisdiction of the sea controlled by the federal United States under the trusteeship of the British monarchy. Yes, they were still in control in 1865. So the British were still here, and they were under, in control. Or they was overseas, it doesn't matter where they were, but, the, but they were still under the Treaty of, of uh, Verona, so they were still under the control. The federal United States were the states that they put together to declare and try to get control, but the jurisdiction said declare the jurisdiction, let me go back, the jurisdiction of the continental United States, but peace is never declared 
in the international jurisdiction of the sea. So we're talking about the ocean, and 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 I, I'm gonna throw in the Great Lakes. I don't know if they would be known as the sea, but anyway, all the ships that was coming in for trade. See, during there was only two gigantic commerce during that time. One was was a, a, a cargo from ships trade, and the other was agriculture. So they needed slaves to deal with agriculture, and they needed ships to come in to bring whatever they needed. So they still was controlled. The ships were still controlled by the British monarch. But they now they done slipped in a new form of government, and the foreign banks are in control of the new United States of America, Inc., because they had to borrow money, because it was in they were in uh, they were in debt. You know, in other words, we're talking about two wars. We were talking about the Indian War or the Gullah Wars or the War of the Seminole, which you can look mm-hmm. up. And then after they it was over, I predict that the South won, which was the Confederate States. See, the United States of America, they just took the name Confederation and they did it in revisionism. That's the word I wanted earlier. They did that through a pencil. They didn't have a damn thing to do with that Gullah War. Those were blacks and and, and native indigenous Americans and Native Americans fighting. And the and the Iroquois was fighting because they did not want two things. They wanted slavery to stay in place. And they wanted the North, uh, which would be the Piratan, to quit marrying those Europeans and mixing the blood. Mm. You did. Now slavery was the was the way of life during that time. You got to understand that it wasn't an ugly thing until the Europeans took it over during Reconstruction. Now slavery ain't good for nobody, but that's a word that they choose. And if you know or heard the latest. You, do you know that all the school books are printed and written in Texas? Did you know that, Bethany? I've written in what? They're written in Texas, and they're in shipped Texas? out across the United States, all the school books. I didn't know that. They're, they're, they're put together and written in Texas. And now they got a big controversy going because they want to change the word slavery and call them workers. So the first shipment went out, and they were calling all of the quote-unquote slaves, they called them workers. And the story goes that I saw on TV, a young boy went home and showed his mom his homework, and when she saw that, she went bonkers. And when she went up there to school and went to court and all that, they said, well, it's such, they made a mistake, but it's such a, 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 moder, a monetary loss, they couldn't call all the books back in. So you're going to see very soon where slavery is going to be taken out of the school books. Now, wow. that ought to tell you they put slavery in the school books because a slave can only be, by definition, a Slavic European. That's where the word Slav comes from. Through revisionism, they created slaves and then put us in because we really came in as sharecroppers from the beginning. But there were some bad owners and some good owners. And once they realized we didn't know English, they began to cheat us like crazy. We didn't have any idea what was going on. And they would come out, and like we lived for hundreds of years by migrating from state to state, from from district to district, with no problems. Once they saw that, they began to set up fence where you couldn't get through. They burned of forests and trees and run off the, the wild life. They put dams in the rivers to stop the fish. So as a result, with you not knowing what's going on as an indigenous American or a Native American, you found out that when winter came, you didn't have no food to get through the winter. But the, but the colonists, those so-called frontiermen and settled, uh, settlers, they went out and said, come on over here and work with us. And we will feed you through the winter, and you'll make a little money. 
but you got to leave the names over there. You dig hmm. Yeah. Some of them that had more slaves would tell the landowners, the black landowners, that let me plant on your land and I'll give you half the profit. And then they cheated them or whatever. And before you know it, they took the land away from them and took our names. Uh-huh. And that's how they got it through the registry of deeds so that it would look like they owned the land all the time. Uh-huh. And I've got something to tell you on that a little bit later. But let's keep going. We got more. Okay. Let's, go. let's, get, let's get to getting. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, this is number 14. Eight, right. This is in the year 1868. The Corporate Congress writes itself a new corporate constitution called the Constitution of the United States of America. Stop. And Palm. Stop. Stop. Say that again. Read that line one more time. In 1868, the Corporate Congress writes itself a new corporate constitution called the Constitution of the United States of America. Do you see anything wrong with that sentence? Yeah. What? The Corporate Congress... They wrote, they said, so they came up with a new concept, corporate constitution. And what did they call it? The Constitution of the United States of America. <laughs> what did I tell you earlier? So go you back told us they, they changed the word from for to of. Yes, and you see it right there. Remember I told yeah. you, we talked about it when we get further down the line. And nobody noticed it. Hmm. And due to that English, what we call a supreme, perfected, I can't even think of the other word, whatever it was, they used language that we didn't understand. So by the first one said that they owned, I mean, the first one said we own the United States. And then now they say that they own the United States. Yeah. All because of that one word. Yes. <laughs> Ain't that some heavy crap? Yes. <laughs> I told you you better be sitting down tonight. Didn't I tell you that? Mm-hmm. Lord. <laughs> like you say, don't miss somebody. <laughs> All right. Unbelievable. <laughs> Start reading it again. Start from the beginning. Go right on through. The corporate okay. Congress. Okay. Now, they yeah. did this. and We want to keep this timeline going. They did this in 1868. The yeah. corporate Congress writes itself a new corporate constitution called the Constitution of the United States of America. And palms off this look-alike, sound-alike, private corporation document as if it was the actual constitution. This is yes. fraud on many levels. <laughs> and right. they want to lock people, and, and they'll lock you up in a minute for fraud. Yes. Is that yes. the, the cat, the, the cat, the kittle turning, or whatever they say. Okay. The, the constitution, the constitution, Constitution of the United States of America purposely sought to confuse and And delude people into thinking delude people into thinking it was the actual equity contract obligation obligating the states to receive services and uh, subordinate Subjugate. Subjugate, subjugate their yes. international jurisdiction to the federal government. Yes. Once they said that the federal United States with this of, when they made it look like they owned America by changing that word, they made people believe that you owe the government rather than the government owing you. And that's what we ought to do. We all think we owe the government. We're paying them taxes. 
You're saying we're buying food at high rates, all of that. We got to get insurance. We got to get licensed because the government has to function. So we are telling ourselves that the government owns us, so we got to do what the government says. And they only change one word to do it. And then they purposely sought to confuse and delude the people into thinking it was the actual equity contract obligating, which means we owe the states to receive services and subjugate their international jurisdiction to the federal government. So you just gave them, uh, uh, psychologically, you gave them your land, your house, and you say they got to have it because the government's got to operate. And that's a bunch and, of BS. And we gave them our children, our babies, yes. when they were born. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. Lord. I, I love it. I love it, Beth. When I give you a headache, I hate to tell you to your face, but I love it. Because you, <laughs> you learned it. Ah! All right, let's but keep it going. Hurts. I mean, this, this is almost as bad as when I had my baby. This is like a baby pain, birthing pain. Yeah. This, this stuff hurts. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, All right, number okay, 15. Okay, number 15. This is in the year 1871. The Corporate Congress began to set up shop for itself by creating a separate government in the District of Columbia. The initial effort fa fails, but several years later, the Washington, D.C. municipality is created as an independent international city-state, ran as, I don't know what these were. Preliminary, preliminary ol oligarchy. Preliminary oligarchy. Okay. By the, by the member of Congress. Also, now, in 1871, the, the Corporate Congress claimed to own all United States corporations. This is the first, 41st Congress, third section, chapter thir 62, 63, 64, and 65. I searched for that and couldn't find it. They took it out or they decoded they coded it, and I don't know where it is. So some of your uh, listeners out there may know how to get to it. But an oligarchy is a handful of people who controls the masses, which takes away our democracy. It takes away our common law. It takes away our republic. You don't have oligarchies in a republic. And they'll be the last to say they oligarchy because that's criminal. The original Constitution was set up not to have oligarchies but it's ran by the members of Congress. That's why they're fighting, in the, they're fighting in Washington right now and want to get rid of the rules of the, uh, of, 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 what's, his, what's his position, the tent to quit? Speaker, Speaker of the House, because he has all the control, man. And yeah. he, he, he's the leader of the oligarchy. He's got more power than the president. President can only submit a bill. If the Speaker of the House disagrees, it'll never get passed. So why would anyone want to turn that power down? White folks love power. That's where I started looking into this thing. Europeans would do anything for power. It's like that movie they got out. This punk walked across the Empire State Building on a wire. They'll do anything to get in the record book. Whatever it says, man. <laughs> And then he said, when he got out there in the middle, he had a Charlie heart, and he didn't know what to do, so he laid down on the wire until it went away. Come on. Good gracious. White folks always want to set a record. You dig it? Now, here we are talking about the oligarchy. And nobody wants that position. It's, 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 it's unbelievable. And they have to lie because they don't want it to come out the way we're learning it tonight. You dig it? Yes. <laughs> Are you with me, Bev, or did you fall out? Did you faint? I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to hold on. <laughs> but, 
All right, go ahead, number 16. We ain't going to make it, number 16. Okay, this is the uh, year 1874-1885. Uh, all the actual, actual states on the land are reorganized and at the same time completely new federal states are created and new state constitutions are written for them. The original states on the land are renamed in their process. The original state of Ohio operating land jurisdiction became the Ohio state, while the uh, up-serving serving, uh, federal state, merely a corporate franchise of the United States of America, Inc., operating in the international jurisdiction of the sea, took over the name State of uh, Ohio. And that that's with all the states, right? Yes. Yes. And keep in mind, we're only talking about the, they only had jurisdiction of the sea. Now, we're talking about the federal uh, states. Now, British had the uh, uh, jurisdiction over the inland waters. But somehow, and I didn't get a chance to bring it up, somehow the federal states took, they didn't, they didn't ask and didn't buy it, they just took over the, the, the sea. And they only had, and I'm reading it here, the original states on the land are renamed in this purpose. The original state of Ohio operating the land jurisdiction became, the, became Ohio State. Like you and I live in Michigan State, while the American uh, United States of America, which, which was a federal state, merely a corporate franchise of the United States of America, operating in the international jurisdiction of the sea. Now remember, we're talking two different jurisdictions. One is of the sea, and I'm underlining that right now, and one is jurisdiction of the land. You dig it? Yes. And both of them are different. One of them belongs to United States, Inc., and I don't know who that other one belongs to, but I would just say for conversational purposes, they were, they belong. I ain't going to say that because I don't know what they belong to. Mm-hmm. I want to say that, but we're talking about federal state. Okay, so... The engineer said it could be we the people, which makes it be part of the United the original Constitution. But it says oh, here the, the land, the land part, or are you talking yeah. about the sea? Yes, jurisdiction of the land versus jurisdiction of the sea. Of the land, you dig it? Yeah, it's two different jurisdictions. I'm looking here. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. Okay, number 17. 17. Uh-huh. Now, this is the year 1900 to 1904. Still lusting after more power for itself, the Corporate Congress set up a second shop for itself and obtained permission to do it from the Supreme Court in a series of cases known as the Insular Tar- Tariff Case cases, yes. as with, with setting up the Washington, D.C. municipality as a foreign city-state on our shores and running it as their own little, would you say, oligarchy? The, the, oligarchy. Yeah. The Congress now took the federal territories and possessions and made a new union of American states. Puerto Rico, Gum, and what else? You said it was five of them? Yeah, Puerto Rico, Philippines, Guam, Somali, Somalia, Somalia, I mean, by Hawaii, and uh, uh, Mal- Malian Islands, Malian, Mal- Mal- Malana Islands. Now, let me tell you what is a insular case. In 1898, the United States signed the Treaty of Paris. Remember I told you, they always sign these damn treaties. Entered mm-hmm. into entered, entered 
into force in April of 1899. So you were talking about 1900 to 1904, which ended the Spanish-American War and granted the United States, the Philippines, Puerto Rico, and Guam. Additionally, Cuba remained under the jurisdiction of the United States military government. Don't ask me what that is. Until its independence in 1902. And that's how, in that, in that treaty, which I don't know about, that's how they got that island down there known as Guantanamo. Mm. The United States owns that island, and then the land, and that goes back to the jurisdiction of the land versus the jurisdiction of the sea. Remember, Puerto Rico's in the sea. Uh, Guam is in the sea. Puerto, uh, Philippines is in the sea. And the island of, um, I don't know what that thing is, island of Maritania is in the sea. Okay? And Cuba is, is a landmass, but Guantanamo is in the sea. So the United States refused to give up Guantanamo. You dig it? At the time, there was a debate on how to govern these territories since nothing was said about it in the Constitution of the United States. So what they're really doing, they're making up crap as they go along. They're stealing land and stuff. Mm-hmm. You dig it? Now, in the cases of the court, in, in, in the cases where the court's response to a, a major issue in the 1900 presidential election and in the American Anti-Imperialist Imperialist League, summarized by the phrase, does the Constitution follow the flag? That's some European stuff. I don't know what that means. But it says, does the Constitution follow the flag? So that's all the so-called insular cases. You got it? Yeah. Now, remember this, and we're going to get to it as we get move along. United States of America, Inc. only has power over the sea and... Washington, D.C. That's all. And every time they make a law, they're only talking to Washington, D.C. and the sea. They ain't talking to you. Out of your ignorance of law and your ignorance of, um, I don't know, landmass and that trash they taught you in school, they made you think they were talking to you. You get it? So... So what you're saying is the United States of America, Inc. has control of Washington, D.C., and those five little islands or whatever that's that's in the water there. Territories, yes. And I ain't saying it. You're reading it for yourself. Yeah. I didn't say it. And so all of these laws and rules and statues and things that they got going on in Michigan and Mississippi and all of those places is none and void. Yes. Yes. All right. And only your ignorance make you abide by it. That's why they have to give you a remedy. So you can't say that they cheat you, but they don't tell you you have a remedy. Now you got it, and that's the birth certificate. You don't belong to that crap anymore. Because once your mama registered you, you became a part of, no, no, you didn't. Your birth certificate became a part of United States of America, Inc., which is Washington, D.C., and the five territories. And every 13th Amendment that's out there, which means about 85 to 95% of all the citizens, because they're all dumb. And I don't mean dumb on a negative note. I mean dumb on an ignorant note that they don't know what's going on. And they will look at me as a high school dropout and call me a troublemaker and an idiot because I don't have enough credentials to even talk to them. That's why I got my own show. (laughs) I wouldn't want those credentials. Oh, my God. (laughs) I love it. I love it. All right, let's keep going. We ain't through with this madness. 
Number 18. Now, this, we're no, in the no, year. No, 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 no. Go back into 17 and start up there where it says Puerto Rico, Guam, and et cetera, and begin calling it. Go from there. Puerto Rico, Guam, uh, uh, oh, and began calling it the United States of America minor. Yes, they and minor means they're only talking about five five states, I mean five territories, and D.C. Now read the next sentence. They just forgot to add the minor part of the name from then on and let people assume that all the uh, laws they passed governing this constitutional democracy also apply to the continental United States. Yes. Yes. You get it? You need to read that every night. They assume, they let you assume that they were talking to you because they was only talking to United States of America, Inc., which was a minor. The major is when they're talking to continental United States. That's why I say when they're talking to uh, uh, us, they use the blue, because the blue, they're tricking us with the blue tie. And then when they're talking about the major, which is the truth, they use the red tie. Or you can say they're talking to only the territories and Washington, D.C. That's all they have control of. Hmm. You want to keep going or you need to get up towel and put on your forehead, man? I need to go lay down. <laughs> you can't say I didn't warn you, Beth. Didn't I warn you? Yes, you did. Woo! Okay, well, tell you what we'll do. We'll take a five, we're going to take five minutes. And I'm, uh, I get calls all night, so I can't say the time I'm going to shut down every night because, I, you know, everybody's on different time zones. I don't think you can imagine what I've been going through, but it ain't no big deal. The only way I can solve the problem is for me to uh, to keep going. i got to shut down some operations. I need your, your charger. So what I'm going to do is shut down every Thursday at 6 and reopen every Monday at 10. And that's on the line, area code 313-656-7283. Okay? And, that, and that's your email, too? My e- well, I can take emails, but I'm not going to deal with them until I get on my regular 40-hour. My, my, see, when the phone, if I check my, well, I, I, yep. I'm not going to deal with the emails. I get an emergency I made, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to try to back off the emails. Because I'm already okay. caught up and backed up. You know, right now, it would take me uh, two weeks, ten days, and two weeks in order for me to get through what I didn't promise I was going to do in 24 hours. So I'm beginning to look like a big liar, you know. And I know people are getting uh, tired of dealing with me on this kind of stuff. So give me a break to catch up. And what I'm going to do is definitely what I'm going to do is do better so I can uh, meet my obligations. All right? Okay. All right. All right. So let's go back to uh, 18. And you know, Ben, we may have to do a part two on this thing because we, we still got to go to 22, and then we got the, the law. Yeah. yeah we got the uh, law, so uh, that will give us both a chance to talk over the uh, declaration of law and we can go from there. So do you have any phone calls or any uh, any, let me see. any shout uh, If you have any questions or comments, you can call 347-215-8041 and push the number 1, and that will show. And, Ron, what is your number? 718-506. Uh, 1864, 718-506-1864, and you put number one, and I'll see you, and we'll we'll see if you got to, you know, we'll go from there. Okay. All right. All righty. 
Let's now, get back in. This, Go uh-huh. ahead. Uh, let's get now, back in to uh, Puerto Rico. Go back to Puerto Rico and Guam and begin calling it the United States of America Minor. They just forgot to add, I'll do this, they just forgot to add the minor part of the name from then on and let people assume that's the word we want. Assume, everybody assume. It's like ask, A-S-S me, if you got an assumption. You assume, okay? So you assume, let me see, where am I at? That all the repugnant laws they pass governing this constitutional democracy also applies to the continental United States. Now, you can start on 18, Bev. Are you there? Are you there, Beverly? What happened? Bev? We can't get through one program without having some some mess. Oh, I see what happened. Oh, that ain't what I want. Bev, uh, your, your, uh, Beverly dropped her call, so I'll go ahead and start till she gets back. Yep, I see where. Her call was her call was dropped. All right, I'll start on eighteen, from nineteen twelve to nineteen thirteen. A private association of European and American banks, calling themselves the Federal Reserve, bought the Government Services Corporation, known as the United States of America Inc. Isn't that something? Bev got to get back in here because she needs to hear this. And she's not back yet. Okay. So the Federal Reserve bought that piece of trash known as United States of America, Inc. And its states, I mean, and its state franchises as a business venture and began operating such familiar agencies as the United States Department of Agriculture and the United States Department of Transportation as private, for-profit businesses without telling anyone. There she is. She's back. All right. All right. You're back? Yep. Yeah. Do you hear that? I'll read uh-huh. where I was. I'll read where, what I did while you were gone. Okay. All right, and I look like I got a question, too, but let me read this first, and then I'll take this this caller. The private association of the European and American banks, calling themselves the Federal Reserve, bought the Governmental Services Corporation, known as the United States of America, Inc. The Federal Reserve bought that. And it's state franchises, which means all of those states that have all caps, as a business venture and begin operating such familiar agencies as the United States Department of Agriculture and the United States Department of Transportation as private for-profit businesses without telling anyone. You see that? Yes. (laughs) Yes. All right, let me see. The Federal Let me check Reserve this. took over the corporation, the United States of America Inc. Yes, and they and they began and to name. Now notice they set up as a business venture and began operating such familiar agencies that we know today, but did not know in eight nine uh, nineteen eleven what no Department of Transportation or Department of Agriculture. It only came into existence in 1918, I mean, 1912 and 1913. Okay? Mm-hmm. And, Hold and, on, uh, we got a caller. We got a caller. Uh, we got a caller okay. here. Hold on a minute. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes. yes, caller. Area code 313. Oh, that's, that's you. Hold up. Hold up, Bill. 
Area code 248-8549. Do you have a question or comment? Area code 248-8549. Do you have a question or comment? Well, I guess they just listening. Yeah. They yeah. probably didn't mean to push the one button. Yep. Okay. So go ahead from there. Start with... Um, they uh, exercise. They exercise the government power. They didn't really possess in a vast, wait a minute, they didn't really possess in a vast fraud scheme in collusion with members of Congress to institute a fiat monetary system and misuse their position of trust to put competitors out of business, set up monopolies, rig commodity markets, and commit other acts of blatant self-interest, criminality, and fraud. <laughs> yes. You see it? Yes, my God. And then they had the nerve to steal all the gold. Yes, but well, we ain't got to that yet. Got to that part yet. Oh. Yes. But notice that they can control everything by manipulating it from the Federal Reserve because they exercise government powers that they didn't really possess in a vast fraud scheme in collusion with the members of Congress. They've been crooks all the time to institute a fiat money system and misuse their position of trust, which is against the law, to put competitors out of business set up monopolies, rig commodity markets, and commit other acts of blatant self-interest, criminality, and fraud. Keep going. Go ahead. Read the next one. Uh, okay. This is in the year 1917. Engaging yeah. in a war for profit, Congress and their banker bosses pass a War Power Act and a Trading with the Enemy Act the numerous other illegal and uh, repugnant Reputant. acts, repugnant acts pertaining only to the federal United States and the international jurisdiction of the sea, but represents yes. them to the public as if this uh, pertained to the actual states and people on the land of the continental United States. Deceived by this... Um, Finna, uh, Finna. Per proposal fraud, millions of Americans comply with what they believe to be the law passed by a legitimate Congress acting as uh, deputies of the state and of the people. Yes. Yes. And that's why I stop you when you make certain comments because it's set up that way. Don't they know mm. better? Isn't it against yeah. the law? No, because they set it up like that. Now, this judge. Yes. This, um, this Anne. Anna Von uh, Ritz. Yeah. Yes. Okay, now, how long has she been knowing all of this? Well, I would say Why? the time has not been right for her to bring it out. Until now. See, a lot of people know stuff, but it's not uh, advantageous to your life and family to bring it out at the wrong time. Everything mm -hmm. is crumbling now. Let me give you a good example. Robert Williams, who was a revolutionary, ended up being a revolutionary, but he was a black brother out of Mississippi who was a member of the NAACP back in the day of the early six, uh, late 50s and 60s, and they were killing black folks, and he armed the deacons of, they had a name, the deacons of something, and they began to shoot back, and they put out a warrant for his arrest to kill him. They couldn't find him, so he went abroad. First he left and went to, went to China and stayed in China for a long time. Then he, he moved to of Cuba, and he came back to the United States about, I'm going to say roughly, 
10 years ago, 7 to 10 years ago, because I went to his memorial here in Detroit because a lot of the drum members, General Baker and a lot of them heavyweights, had worked with him. And he only came back to the States because the climate was right. Nixon was president, I recall, and the climate was right. So you got to understand how that works. So this judge only could move when the climate was right. And right now, with everything collapsing and the government is in complete disarray, they fight like cats and dogs. The election is everybody's crooked up there, crooks. He, they, uh, he, uh, the judge, the female, saw fit to bring it out, especially since the Pope was coming. And the Pope was coming for a purpose for the Pope. He didn't come over here to see nobody. He came here to hold the Vatican's treasure in, in place. You dig it? Well, and, the, the and, Vatican and this corporation uh, is under attack. We got to keep our eye on the U.N., too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know what you mean by under attack. What does that mean? Uh, you know how you got this other corporation that wants to take over. They, they, if they divide and conquer these two here, then they can mm-hmm. gain control. Yes. You talking about them two, uh-huh. Are you talking about them two bums that I mentioned in the beginning, the Tea Party and the um, the other one, the um, uh, Freedom Now Party? No, I'm talking about the Corporation United States of America and the Religious Corporation, those two, because those are two, two powerful corporations. And, no, they, and no, no, they, no, 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 no. The, the, under the their, the Pope owns the corporations. He ain't worried about them. That's why he gave up uh, the Jubilee in 19, I mean, yeah, 2013, because he told all his corporations to write off the debt. Now, he's got some renegade corporations over here, but they don't have any power unless Obama turns the military loose to protect them. That's why the Pope set up the uh, 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 uh uh, uh, Jade Jade Helm and the Grand Army of the Republic. He ain't worried about them bums, not now. But I tell you, there may be some some pot shots and stuff like that coming. So I'm not no, disagreeing I'm not, with you. I'm trying to clarify you. Yeah, I'm trying to clarify myself too. But I'm okay. I'm looking at the UN. Maybe there is something going on between, we'll say the Pope, because this is his corporation, and, and he and he, this is a branch, right? He has the religion part, and he got this part. Am I correct? Yes, but you say it again, that the United Nations is a corporation also. That's what I'm saying. And okay, so you know how you... And the, Pope, and the Pope owns the corporation of United Nations. And he has oh. a lot of Catholics in the in the United Nations. Oh, okay. So I don't think they're going to raise raise up. They ain't never done nothing anyway in this realm of of war. And they got to worry about their own inner inner circle because they got a lot of Catholics in there. All of the uh, South America full of Catholics. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Africa got a lot of, oh, you know, I ain't got to go through it. You know what I'm talking right. about. And they sent a lot of Catholics to the United Nations as ambassadors. So I don't think he's got to worry too much. He's got to worry about them uh, Chrysler, General Motors, and Ford, them, those crooks. And they are only abiding by the law. Because remember the answer that two weeks ago when I did it, the, the lawyers of the Roman Curie wrote back to this judge and told the judge under no other circumstances, the people elected those crooks, and we cannot step in and protect the people because they're too dumb and stupid. I read that. If you want me to get it, I'll bring it out when we meet again. He said, you elected the people. We can't disrupt democracy. It, it ain't the Pope's fault that we're dumb. Hello? Mm. 
I hear you. Yeah. And and I you're only you waking up. You're only waking up because you're a part of the new, let me call it the new regime, and your body is searching for truth. Everybody's body ain't searching for truth. They out there bowling. Dancing in cabarets and boogaloo. They don't get drinking that fire water and gambling with the lottery. The masses, you see what they did in Detroit, put a peck of women as, as mayor, and he's stealing everything and we paying for it. He done privatized well, everything in Detroit. To me, it just seemed like that he just did what his forefathers, forefathers uh, have done in the past. They just come in and take and make their own corporations and rules and regulations and laws. and. Okay, well, I can agree with you, but I ain't going to agree because as long as Coleman was here, none of them Peckerwood came in here. That's why we didn't have any uh, funds and no help in the 20 years that Coleman was in office. They had to put a punk in, in the seat. And then they went through five presidents of uh, mayors in order to show us that none of them ain't worth a damn. And we voted for every one of them. So whose fault is it? White folks are black ass niggas. <laughs> I got the point, Ryan. I got it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sis. I love you. <laughs> I got it. I didn't, I, didn't mean, I didn't mean to go there so heavy. But you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And the, and we're not ready yet. We got that Christian church, all them all them Jack Lakes preachers. They don't want to hear this kind of talk. And they're teaching everybody on Sunday that you can die and go to heaven. So most of these niggas say, well, I'd rather not fight. I'd rather go ahead and, and uh, stay as I am, and then I'll get to heaven in the by and by. You, you dig it? I, yeah, I hear you. All right, I'll calm down. All right, where we at? We are on. on <laughs> I heard that. I heard that sign. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, I oh, love it, man. I, really do. <laughs> I don't see how you can. This, this is uh oh you, yeah you as natural fighter because oh my god I feel like I've been in a battle. I'm You're gonna get you like that. Uh-huh. The more you learn, the less you become afraid and confused. Yeah. So it's just a matter of time. You're gonna get it. You're gonna that light gonna come on. You're gonna say, "Oh my goodness." I'm seeing it. It's the the more each week I see more and more, but it's just unbelievable. It, well, I, now I can agree with you on that. Yeah, it is. Uh-huh. Oops, there it is. All right, so, where we at? Are we. We're number twenty. Number twenty. All right, hold on. I got another. I got another caller. Let's see okay. what happens. Let me open them up. Uh, yes, caller. Area code seven six three. Last number seven nine nine four. Are you out there? Yeah, I'm out here. I just called to tell you to calm down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know this episode is. You got to give us a chance to digest. You know, you just can't eat and eat and eat and eat to your pants lay to the button on your pants bust. You know, you got to sit down and and, and let let food digest a little bit. I know you got yeah. a lot of stuff. Yeah. Okay. You, know, you got to give us a chance to understand what you what you're running, cause cause uh, if you go too fast, you know, you know we don't we 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 only can eat so much. You go to smorgasbord, you just can't eat everything. All <laughs> it right. all looks good, but you can't eat it. I hear you. All right, let me apologize to you and the listening audience. Bev and I, we talk about it every day and every week when we have our meetings. I, it's nothing, you know, it ain't personal. I just get oh, excited. No. I, I can't. Right. But I want to calm down. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm listening. Keep on going. <laughs> shout out, shout out from Minnesota. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, oh, no wonder I didn't recognize that. That's all wrong. <laughs> all right, brother. Woo. All right. All right, Ben. <laughs> I'm gonna get a call from that brother tomorrow. He gonna dead. He gonna jump dead in my case. Woo. <laughs> this stuff is this stuff is too much. It is. Right, That's brother. why I told you I need to go lay down. It's just. Uh... 
<laughs> Good life. Mm. <sighs> you gotta laugh, babe. You gotta laugh. Laugh to keep from crying. Yeah, you, yeah, you have to. You have to. Yep. But I got I another. Mean, I got another caller. Hold good, on. Good. Good. All right. Area code eight one three one five six three. Do you have a question or comment? Wait a minute. Area codes. Uh, well, I got another one here. Uh, seven three four. Eight one zero zero last four. Do you have a question or comment? I got a comment for you, Ron. All right, go ahead. Yeah, this is your friend out here in Ipsy. All right. Hey, Art. I got that. I got that email from you today. I'm gonna do something with that, brother. You, boy, you knocked my socks off with that thing. Yeah, but you knocking our socks off tonight. Wally need to throw some water on you. <laughs> <laughs> You're rough tonight. You're rough. Don't don't give him any idea. You sit right here looking and laughing. If he goes and kiss it, Adam, I'm gonna blame you. Woo. Yeah, I'll just <laughs> call and tell you that. All right, but this, stuff is, you. this stuff is something else. Don't you agree? No, oh, it's good. It's real good. All right. Woo. If All you right, get some time, my call me. We do the breakfast. Okay, for Thursday, 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 the fifteenth. Okay, I, I'll um, I'll deal with it. Yeah, just give me a call. Talk to you later. Okay, all right, do that. All right, good enough. Okay, Woo. all right, I'm cooling down. Wally, he ain't moved. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I tell you. All right, so let's we, try. We, uh, we like down to our last 32 seconds. So are we going to do a part three or are you yes. going to finish? Are you going to finish this on your Tuesday show or how are you going to do this? I wish I could answer it. I, I, I want to do it with you on the, on the, on your next show. Okay. We can do this. We so, can do this. I don't know. I don't know what I'll okay. do. You know, on on Tuesday, I can't think that far ahead. Okay. But I'll come up with something. You did. Okay, so we go because I want to get into the this this um the law part, the uh, yes. declaration of law. That's very interesting. Yes. yes. And we're gonna stop on nineteen. Yeah, yeah, that's where we stopped at. All right. Okay, okay. Beth. Okay, so we'll finish. Come back again uh, next Wednesday, and we will finish this. And Ron, you on Tuesday? Um, what Maybe time I'll you on? on Go ahead. What time are you on on Tuesday? Six thirty. I'm I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, seven o'clock. Seven o'clock on Tuesday, Beth. Okay. All right. I'll be back with okay. you at six thirty. And Thursday, okay. I'm sitting down until Monday at 10 o'clock. I want to make sure everybody understands that. I will turn my so, phone on. So your shop is closed Thursday yes. at 6 p.m., and you do not open back up again until Monday at 10 a.m.? Yes, ma'am. You got it. Okay. Got it. All right. Well, thank you, Woo. Ron. I'm going to lay down now and digest <laughs> <laughs> all right, Deb, I appreciate you. Appreciate and let me you. apologize to all the listening audience. I am not personal. I just get excited. And that's why I want to take a break and break down the four weeks so maybe I can calm down when I come on air and I won't be so geeked, you know. Uh, but that's okay. Time. You know, some, some of us is hard-headed, and sometimes you have to come on. You know how your mama used to have to keep hollering at you? Some of us are like that. <laughs> All right. Until next week, man. 